excessive force and violation of Fourth Amendment rights. Those are the claims in a lawsuit filed on behalf of Black Lives Matter Seattle King County against Seattle police. The lawsuit also specifically calls out officers using tear gas just three days after the police chief, Carmen Best, said it wouldn't be used for 30 days. And within just the last 30 minutes, we've received a response from Seattle Mayor Jenny Durkin's office. It says the mayor and police chief are committed to a complete review of the response to the protests and quote, today's lawsuit represents another step by the community to hold the city accountable for its response to recent events. More calls today to defund the police, but what does that mean? What would it actually look like? King 5's Chris Daniels talked to Seattle city leaders. He joins us now live from one Seattle police precinct with their perspective tonight, Chris. Yeah, Joyce, the protests and violent confrontations have led to new calls to reduce police funding, not only in Seattle, but across the country. And in this city, it could happen sooner rather than later. <laughs> Defund the police. It is a phrase. It is a movement and complicated to say the least. In Seattle, the police department accounts for more than $400 million of the annual budget, dwarfing community funding, or health and human services. Our police officers were earning 2014 salary dollars in a 2018 Seattle. Seattle, with a near unanimous council vote in 2019, has also been offering $15,000 signing bonuses to attract more officers and fill a shortfall. Let's go get more. All right. Yeah. Some folks um, just really are embracing of the concept of a reduction um, in the police department budget and a reallocation to, um, to, to invest in people and um, other ways to address communities' uh, public safety needs. Council Public Safety Chair Lisa Herbold says her perspective has changed since she and her colleagues approved the police bonuses last year. I think this is a really important opportunity to uh, both take apart the budget and reimagine what a public safety department for the city might look like. One of the council's more moderate voices and steady mayoral ally, Deborah Juarez, tweeted she's ready to defund the police as well, but defunding should not be confused with disbanding. There is precedent in Camden, New Jersey, where corruption and crime rates led to the elimination of the entire police department in 2013. Officers were forced to reapply to a larger county law enforcement office focused on neighborhood patrol and social programs. The early reviews have largely been positive. Mark, Mark. Comparing Camden and Seattle is like comparing apples and oranges, but the fruits of that effort may shape the discussion in the weeks to come. Herbold and Juarez both told me today they do not believe you can flip a switch and end a department, but Juarez in particular said a 50% cut in funding in her mind is, quote, not part of the solution, but again, quoting, we can't keep policing the way we've been doing it. It does seem like there is support within the council to end funding for blast balls and tear gas. That'll be something that'll be discussed again tomorrow. One other quick note as well from the Seattle City Attorney's Office. This is also related to the protests that we have seen regionally. City Attorney Pete Holmes withdrew from a lawsuit challenging King County's proposed changes to the inquest process saying, quote, I heard the community's call loud and clear while also taking a shot at Pierce County saying it doesn't have inquests at all. Manuel Ellis and those before and after him will not have an inquest. King County's executive had called for significant changes to how police shootings are reviewed, but that all had been stalled by court challenges and the coronavirus. That's the story live in West Seattle. Chris Daniels, King 5 News. Chris, thank you. Chris mentioning Manuel Ellis and the family today of Manuel Ellis, the man who died at the hands of Tacoma police, say they have new evidence and new reason to call for an independent investigation. South Bureau Chief Drew Mickelson spoke with the Ellis family attorney and his mother today after that newly released video. Drew?
Well, Jessica, the attorney for Manuel Ellis says that this video you're about to see shows that Mr. Ellis was not combative. They said he was actually being respectful towards police while they were fighting. And he says they did not or he did not deserve to be killed by the officers. The 33 year old died in March while being taken into custody by Tacoma police. Officers said he had been banging on cars and when they tried to arrest him, he started fighting with them. And a medical examiner determined Ellis died due to a loss of oxygen due to physical restraint. Today, his attorney James Bible released doorbell camera video from across the street. He says it's not so much what it shows as what can be heard. The attorney says in the middle of the scuffle, Ellis can be heard saying, I can't breathe, sir. What we learn is he said, I can't breathe, sir. I can't breathe, sir. I can't breathe, sir. A clear sign that it's not only a struggle for breath, but an attempt to still be respectful in your last moments of life. Now the family has been asking for an outside investigation, an independent investigation. Currently, this Tacoma police in custody death is being de uh, investigated by detectives with the Pierce County Sheriff's Department, who also work in Tacoma. And the family says that's just too close. They also don't think it's fair that the county prosecutor, who also works in Tacoma, is going to be able to decide if any criminal charges are filed against those officers. Now, Governor Jay Inslee says he is calling for an independent review of this investigation. And he says if there are problems, the state patrol can do a whole new investigation. But that is not enough for the family. The family does not want Pierce County investigating it. Pierce County told us this afternoon their plan is to present their case to the prosecutor tomorrow when a charging decision will be made is still up in the air. And uh, the spokesperson for the department did say that they have had that doorbell video. It is one of many pieces of evidence they're using in this investigation. Live in South Tacoma, Drew Mickelson, King 5 News. Drew, thank you. Seattle Public Schools took a stand after learning police use school property as a staging area during the protests. The district posted this statement today saying they never gave Seattle Police SWAT or the National Guard permission to come on school property. The statement goes on to say school buildings and spaces are for student learning and supports not for militarized responses. The district says SPD said they will not use school property to stage officers again. Well, George Floyd is now in his final resting place next to his mother in Texas. Today, 15 days after he died while being arrested by police in Minneapolis, thousands across the country watched his family and friends and others remember how he lived. Out of his death has come a movement, a worldwide movement. Floyd's family was overcome with emotion remembering him, seeing how his death has inspired so many to stand up for black lives. Reverend Al Sharpton closed out today's ceremony with a moving speech about the protests. All this family wants is justice. Oh, it's nice to see some people change their mind. The head of the NFL said, yeah, maybe we was wrong football players maybe they did have the right to peacefully protest well don't apologize give colin kaepernick a job back nbc's jay greg was there he joins us live from houston tonight jay so much was said so much emotion during this service yeah. yeah joyce at times it was overwhelming very powerful service and powerful words from so many people who were there not only to remember George Floyd, but to support his family. We heard laughter and tears. We heard praise and prayers inside the church. George Floyd's family joined by a grieving nation today to say one final goodbye. Now, look, his final resting place is in a family plot right next to his mom, who witnesses say he called out for just in the moments before his death. They talked about that today. They talked about as you just heard, that movement created by his death and so many people gathering across the country, around the world to push for systematic and very serious changes to the way police departments operate. It's uh, something that even in their grief today, his family pushed the nation to continue, saying that they did not want George to die in vain, that they wanted to see 
uh, real change come about as a result of what happened in Minneapolis, Joyce? I hope you can hear me. There we go. Uh, how do how do family members and friends, how do they want yeah. him, George Floyd, to be remembered? I know he was a father, a son. How do they want him to be remembered? Yeah. It's a great question. And, you know, he's been such a part of the public eye since his passing 15 days ago. Today we got to see a more personal side of George Floyd, his family talking about what a great athlete he was. He was a two-sport athlete, uh, actually earned a scholarship to play college basketball. But the biggest thing they said about Big Floyd, as they called him, was his heart, that he reached out to everyone in his community here in Houston and then eventually when he moved to Minneapolis, that he was the one that people, especially relatives, went to when they had a problem, and he always seemed to find a way to fix it. He's someone, they said, that was loving, that, that always said he wanted to touch this world. Those were his words, and boy, has he done that in his passing. Uh, again, they just described a, a six foot six giant who was a teddy bear and someone who cared about everybody he ran into, Joyce. Jay, thank you so much for your reporting today. And we heard from many of you who watched a live stream of George Floyd's funeral on our Facebook page. Jennifer wrote, bless you, George. May you live forever in the change you bring to our nation. Your sacrifice is horrible, but your name will be honored for generations. Troy commented, a lot of us are pretty are feeling pretty heartbroken right now about the state of our country. The words being said here are words of positive reassurance. And Ricky says, rest in paradise, George Floyd. You have changed the world forever. Meanwhile, outrage over George Floyd's death continues to fuel on the protests that we're seeing in Seattle's Capitol Hill neighborhood, where there are tents set up right now in front of SPD's East Precinct. King Five's Natalie Swaby was there today and she was there for the moment that the police chief went out there to meet with protesters. Behind me is 13th in Pine where you see the gates and over here it says east side is ours. Someone spray painted together we stand. Today the police chief came here hoping to find some common ground. And the message is people over property. Um, people, and my message is honestly a message of uh, eradication of complacency. Protesters pushing for change met with a police chief focused on the path forward. How we can move forward, how we can keep people safe, first of all, but also, you know, how we might find some resolutions. Yesterday, police removed their barricades, but protesters now have their own fences at the East Precinct, where the words cop free zone and defund police are spray painted nearby. I want to know what was the initial objective to stopping our march in the first place? Protesters have questions about the police use of tear gas. For moving forward, if we do decide to have another march or another big congregation of thousands of people, um, will we be met with the same type of offensive tactics and the same, or are you guys, Again, you guys learned and have, chilling we out? Have pulled or? back, the street was open. The, the, the videos, the cameras, y'all were there. So the next, street was so next open. time that won't be. That no, won't the be only the case. time we react in any kind of way is if you know the officers are taking rocks and bottles, and we remove them. We had 25 people injured. We, I don't want officers injured. I don't want the community injured. This chief says she wants to meet peace with peace. When I look at you, I see my own family member, right in your face, right. So it is time for us to have dialogue and have change. And I'm all for it. I just can't be for any kind of violent acts. After this face-to-face -face meeting, it's still not clear what's next. What's the plan going forward? We want people to be safe. They want to express their rights, we want them to express their rights. Where I think the, the minor things that we disagree on are things like blocking the street. You know, the very thing that people ask us not to do, uh, they're doing. And here's another look at the East Precinct where you see it now says Seattle People Department out here. You can see some tents that have been set up and some barricades, making it clear that people could be out here for some time. In Seattle, Natalie Swaby, King 5 News.